Hello everyone and welcome to uh, another video. In this video I will discuss the Kalam cosmological argument and uh, the concept of infinity. In 2021 I published a little article titled Atheism as an Extreme Rejection of Rational Evidence for the Existence of God. This article has received uh, a lot of attention, and uh, this is why I'm making this video. The, uh, the article argues that atheism is irrational because we have overwhelming evidence for the existence of God. Let me try to explain uh, how it works. I want to begin by talking about one of the things, one of the concepts that is misunderstood. This concept is that all finite things come into existence. It seems obvious. What do I mean by finite things? I mean things such as physical things, such as tables, pizzas, telephones, babies, anything that is made of physical stuff. But there are also non-physical things, such as, for example, concepts, the concepts of human, the concept of humanity, the concept of justice, um, or even thoughts, the thoughts that you have in your mind or in your minds right now. So, by coming into existence. Certain things come into existence from pre-existing stuff. For example, babies come into existence from pre-existing material. Well, there are parents, first of all, and then there's sperm and the egg and all sorts of things. Houses are built with uh, cement and bricks and uh, metal and all sorts of things. But it is not true that everything that comes into existence comes into existence from pre-existing stuff. For example, thoughts presumably are not made of stuff. And uh, concepts, the concept of justice is not made of justice stuff. So, things can come into existence from pre-existing material or without pre-existing pre material. Now, what I am not saying in my argument, and this is a very crucial point, what I am not saying is that just about everything comes into existence. In fact, one of the, the extended conclusions of my argument is that God exists. Now, if God exists, He never came into existence. Rather, He is eternal. So, not everything comes into existence. But certain things, finite things, come into existence. Now, Let's go back to the argument. The Kalam cosmological argument has been formulated in many different ways. My formulation is that in, it is done in a uh, deductive manner. So I argue that I, I uh, offer two premises that lead to a, a conclusion. The first premise is that all finite things come into existence by something else. Okay, All finite things. Everything that, that begins to exist comes into existence by something else.
The second premise is that the universe is one among many of those things that are finite things that come into existence. So given these two premises, we, are, we move to uh, a necessary conclusion that the universe came into existence by something else. From one and two, it is necessary that three. Now, a deductive argument is valid when the premises lead to uh, a necessary conclusion. But we're not satisfied with an argument that is valid. We want an argument to be, in order to, for an argument to be good, the argument has to be sound. So a sound argument has true premises. Now, here's the, uh, the problem with uh, truth. There are certain things that we know Let's let's say uh, let's not not get into the uh, the complications, but we pretty much know that they are true. It is true that, um, for example, cars are driving uh, on the street or on the highway. Okay, there are very simple things. There are other things that are not so uh, easy to determine their truth. For example that all finite things come into existence by something else. Um, what do I mean by that? I mean that some things are not obviously true. And so what we have to do in logic is that we have to present arguments to um, support the truth of a statement that is not obvious, that is not easy to determine. And so um, I am happy with that. I'm not happy with certainty. I'm happy to show that there are arguments that show that the premise is, must be true. So what are the arguments in favor of premise one? Well, think about it. Something cannot come from nothing. And by nothing here, I mean nothing. The absence of energy, time, space, matter. So, now, to begin with, if anything, a thing, whether it's a a cheese puff, or whether it's a subatomic particle, could come into being from nothing and by nothing, then it seems that there's no rules to be followed, or there's nothing that constrains objects, and then just about anything and everything could come into existence. Also, we have experience. Experience, scientific evidence, tells us that things come into existence by something else. Things don't pop into existence from nothing and by nothing. And finally, as a uh, further support to uh, premise one, I think it's obvious that being cannot come from non-being. So I must conclude that premise one is metaphysically true. Now what about premise two? The universe is a finite thing that came into existence. Well. I offer, in the, in the paper and in my book, I offer several arguments, one of which is the Big Bang Theory. I'm not going to discuss that today, but rather I want to focus on philosophical arguments. 
Now, why do I believe that the universe is not eternal? Well, essentially, because the universe is not a metaphysical entity. The universe is a physical entity, is stuff, is something. And the universe is, we might call it, a, uh, a chain of events. Now, if the universe were eternal, if the universe never began to exist, what would be the implication of that? It would mean that the number of events in the past would be an actual infinity. What do I mean by actual infinity? Here's where a lot of people get it wrong and get confused. So there are two meanings for, uh, actual, for, for infinity. One is infinity in the sense of a collection of anything, a collection of uh, items, and uh, we call we use the name infinity because we're what we really mean is that there's an undefined number of items that one can acquire. For example, a collection of coins. Collection of coins, given time, can grow to infinity. But what does that mean there, the word infinity? It means that it will never end. But there's a different meaning of infinity. And that meaning is very strange because you have to think about... And the, one example would be the set of all integers, uh, the set of all natural numbers. When you think about all the numbers, and I mean all of them, not just from 1 to 10, but all the numbers, well, it seems that all the numbers are not forming right now as we speak, but they already exist. And if you ask the question, how many numbers are there? How many numbers exist? Well, the answer is an infinity. But you see, in this case, the infinity, the number of numbers, is not growing. It's already complete, in a sense. So, a complete infinite set is what I what I call an actual infinity. What is this? This is a, a complete collection whose number of items does not increase. It is already infinite and it's already complete. It's a very strange concept. So a growing infinite, a collection, is clearly possible. Think again of the example of the coins. You have a certain number of coins. You can always add one more. And your collection will grow. But your collection will never be complete. Because you will never get to the end of the collection. The collection will uh, keep growing and growing larger and larger and larger. So, this is uh, possible, this is fine. On the other hand, a collection that has an actual infinite number of coins or of pizzas or whatever you want, a collection of items, cannot be, cannot contain an actual infinite number of items. This would be a number that is greater than any natural number and form a complete collection. This is impossible. 
Now, why do I talk about coins and collections in uh, these terms? Because I, it should be obvious that this is an analogy that applies to the universe. Now, think about it. The, uh, the potential collection of coins, the one where you add one more coin or one more item to your collection, is a good analogy for the future. You see, the future is open. Today, as I'm recording this video, is we are in the year 2023. So, uh, there is a, hopefully, a 2024, 25, 26, and so on. So, the future grows. So, it's a potential infinity. Now, some people say, well, but... the number of years ahead of us is an infinity of them. But that would not be correct because, or rather we should say, the number of years ahead of us is potential. It's not actual. It doesn't exist yet. On the other hand, when you think about the past, of the universe. You see, the past is not growing. It seems obvious from our perspective, from uh, the year 2023. The past is not growing. The past is, has already occurred. So all the events in the past either are finite, which is what I think, or it's infinite. But not infinite in the sense that it's growing, but in the infinite in the, in the second sense that I illustrated. In the sense that it is a complete set, a complete collection that has an actually infinite number of events. And I don't care how you divide these events. It doesn't matter that it's arbitrary. The point is that the universe has events, whether you want to divide them into years, months, seconds. Uh, and it, you can divide it into clicks, uh, blimps, whatever you want. But there are events. We're here now. There was a, a previous event and a previous event and a previous event and so on. Okay. So, to recap... It is understandable that the universe potentially can acquire one more event and another one and another one in the future. However, in the past, if we assume that the universe is eternal, the implication is that the number of past events is actually infinite, meaning it's a complete collection that contains an actually infinite number of events. I don't believe that this is possible. I believe that this is false. I'm going to offer two arguments against that idea. There are many other arguments, one of which I recommend looking um, at, just Google, Hilbert's Hotel. That's an argument, great argument against actual infinity. Now, where are my arguments? First argument has to do with the absurdity of a complete infinite. Now, let me say two things before I explain the argument. The first thing is that my argument emulates Hilbert's, David Hilbert's argument of the Grand Hotel, okay, which um, tries to show, quite successfully I would say, that an actually infinite number of things cannot exist. The second thing that I wanted to say is that I'm not arguing that an actual infinite number of things cannot exist at all, in a, in a very specific sense. 
what I argue is that when we talk about mathematical objects, which are not real objects, unless you believe that numbers really exist, okay? When we talk about uh, mathematical objects, abstract entities, then that concept is perfectly fine. At least it is fine for mathematicians because they have developed the, the concept of infinity. They talk about transfinite um, arithmetic and so on. But that's a different story. So I accept that, but I do not accept an actual infinity when it comes to physical objects. Now, once again, you can say, well, but the universe is not an, a, 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 a concrete object. Well, it, I argue that it is because the universe is, what we call the universe, is space-time. So, and um, moreover, we are talking about events. Again, I believe that time is exists. I believe that only the present time exists. Okay? So, yesterday no longer exists. It's going out of existence. Tomorrow does not exist yet. Only the present time exists. All right. Now, first argument. Again, if we assume that the universe never began to exist, which means that the universe is eternal. This would mean that the universe, in the past, there are an actually infinite number of events. However, if that were the case, any number of years could be added or subtracted to the universe without changing the age of the universe, which is, well, crazy. It's impossible. In fact, I could repeat this operation by adding an infinite number of years. I'm using years, for example, as an example. And I could add years, an infinite number of years, how many times? Well, an infinite number of times without ever changing the age of the universe and without, without ever running out of years or changing the age of, of the universe, as I just said. This is clearly, what, what does this demonstrate? This uh, thought experiment demonstrates that infinity, actual infinity, works only when we talk about mathematical uh, entities but it does not work when it when it comes to physical objects or events events that are real they're physical because the universe is a chain of events this leads to the conclusion that the chain of events must have a beginning. I hope it's clear enough. But let me move on to the, the second argument. In the second argument, I, with the second argument, I would like to demonstrate that it is impossible to traverse a complete infinite. Now, the uh, analogy that I use in my paper is the following. Suppose that a man claims to have walked down the stair stairway to infinity. So this is a stairway, okay, that has an actually infinite number of steps. Now, once again, it's very crucial to understand this point. You have to assume 
that this stairway has an infinite number of steps, but the steps are not forming as we speak. The steps are already there. The, step, the steps are done. They're not being built. They're already there. And when you ask, okay, but how many are they? The answer is an infinite number. Now, suppose that this man standing before you on the last step of the stairway claims to have walked down the stairway from infinity. Woo! Wiping his sweat off his forehead, he says to you, it was tough, but here I am. Now, is this possible? How can it be possible? First of all, you would want to ask him, when did you start? Because if the stairway has an infinite number of steps, then there was no point where you uh, started walking down the stairway. But another question, more important question, I think, if it's possible to walk down from infinity, is it possible to walk back to infinity? This shows you, I think, the absurdity of infinity. Obviously, it's not possible. Now, if it's not possible to traverse the stairway, to, namely to walk back to infinity, because you keep walking and walking, and you will never get there. I mean, where? There's no there. Now, if it's impossible to uh, walk back to infinity, namely to the infinitieth step, the last step that completes the set of infinite steps, how is it possible then to do it in reverse? It isn't. Now, what is the, uh, the cash value of this argument? Well, the argument essentially says because it's impossible, to walk down the stairs from infinity, then it is equally impossible for the present moment, the present time, to arrive. Because if the universe stretches back to infinity, then it would be impossible. It would take forever and ever and ever, and you will still not I mean, not you, but the present moment will never arrive because after one event, there's another event. After one moment, there's another moment and another one and another one and another one. How many more? Well, an actual infinity of them. So it would be impossible for the present moment to arrive. So, therefore, what this shows is that because the present time exists where here this implies that there was a beginning okay so what's the conclusion well then whether you like it or not the conclusion is that the universe came into existence by something else if you don't like the conclusion you have to go back and tell me which of the two premises is false now, what do we do with the conclusion? With the conclusion, we, what I do with the conclusion is that I try to uh, derive an extended conclusion. How? Well, if the universe was brought into existence by something else, now, what do we know about that, about that something else? What I argue is that we know that that what I call that something else must be itself uncaused and eternal. Otherwise, it goes back to the same process. So you need a, a, a beginner of the series. 
something that is eternal. You also need something that is immaterial because the universe is a material thing. And so prior to the existence of the universe, whatever is there that brought the universe into existence must be immaterial. For the same reason, it must be spaceless and timeless. Now, obviously it must have a certain uh, degree of power. And uh, furthermore, the most important thing that I derive from that conclusion is it must be personal. It must be what I call God. You don't have to call it God. Call it whatever you want. But it must be a person, a mind. Why do I say that? Okay, let me give an argument for why I say that. You have to imagine that there is a, a computer, a laptop. Now, the computer screen shows a, uh, let's say, a letter F. Now, you have to uh, imagine, you have to stretch your imagination and suppose that the uh, this computer is a is an eternal computer. Okay. Okay. I th okay. Siri, I don't need you right now. Okay? I don't have an answer for that. Is there some... Okay. Ah, uh, Siri, Siri. Well, so com uh, assume that the computer is eternal. Now, you want to ask yourself... What is the cause for the letter F on the page, on the, on the screen? And uh, suppose that the cause is a rock. A rock that is impinging um, upon the, 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 the F key on the keyboard. Okay, so the pressure of the rock is such that it produces one single letter F. Now, here's the problem. In this analogy, the rock is the entity that brings the universe into existence. And the, uh, the F is the analog for the universe. Now I hope this, you see where this is going. So the argument is this. Suppose that the rock has been there from eternity. Now obviously if that's the case then the letter F there was never a time when the letter, letter F did not exist, and then it came uh, on the screen. Rather, if the, uh, the rock has been um, put in pressure on the F key from eternity, then the F would be there from eternity. So, in other words, if the cause is eternal, why isn't the universe eternal? You see, if the cause of the universe is there eternally, but the universe is not eternal, it came into existence, then you have to explain how this is possible. The problem is that rocks... In, the, in this analogy, the rock does not have options, does not have the freedom to decide when the F comes into, uh, onto the screen. If the, uh, the rock is putting pressure on the F key, then the F must be there. So the only explanation as to why the cause of the universe is eternal but the effect, which is the universe, universes coming into existence, is not eternal, is that 
The cause is not an object, but is a mind, a mind endowed with freedom of the will. This is why I call it God. God has the freedom to decide when to create the universe. God can exist, in other words, eternally as the cause of the universe without the cause of the universe. Because God can say, exist there without anything, and then say, here, now I want to cause the universe to exist. See, only a free agent, an intelligent agent, could do such a thing. Now, you can say, well, for example, the agent maybe has that power, but is not intelligent. I find it hard, it, hard to believe that an abstract object that is outside space, outside time, it's eternal, and it's frozen, exists eternally without the effect. And then at one point, something changes internally, and bang, the universe comes into existence. What, what explains that change? Nothing explains that change, because if the cause of the universe is changeless, timeless, spaceless, frozen in, in frozen, outside space and time and matter and energy, then there's no possible way that it can change its nature. What what accounts for a the the, the, the its nature to uh, be modified, to change and in such a way that it brings the universe into existence. That doesn't make any sense. The only way that, it, that we can make sense of this, again, is a god. Call it god, call it shmagod, call it whatever you want. The point is, this entity cannot be abstract. This entity must have freedom and a mind to say, now the universe. So, what's the conclusion? Well, the extended conclusion is that God, or whatever you want to call it, brought the universe into existence. Okay, taking a deep, deep breath now. Does this mean that you have to go to church on Sunday? No. Does this mean that you have to go to synagogue, attend a mosque, a religious service? No. No. My argument does not argue for religion. My argument shows that there is a creator, creator of the universe. That's the end of the story. It doesn't say Christianity is true. It doesn't say Islam is true. It doesn't say Judaism is true, uh, Jainism, or any other religion. As a matter of fact, in my book, I argue that all religions are false. I argue for a deistic God. But that's a different story for another video. So, what I do not argue is that the Kalam argument, the way I present it and I defend it, has anything to do with religion, with worship, with any religious doctrine that you can think of. The only extended conclusion that I draw from my argument is that the universe was brought into existence by a mind. There's no possible way that you can escape this truth. If the universe is eternal, that is impossible, as I demonstrated, because, the, because a series of events cannot be actually infinite. Then you cannot escape the conclusion that the universe is a chain of events that is finite. It began a finite time ago. 
Scientists now are saying 14 billion years ago. I don't care when. It, it's not important. What's important is that the universe had a beginning prior to which there was nothing. And if that's the case, then there's, a, there's only one solution to the problem. That God brought the universe into existence. Okay, so I highly encourage anyone who would like to discuss with me further this argument to contact me, uh, to email me, to write to me. I, am, I enjoy this. This is one of my uh, projects. Right now I'm writing another paper about this. Uh, I'll be glad to answer all the questions because obviously in this short video I was not able to cover all the aspects but I'm but I'll be glad to discuss uh, this matter with uh, anyone at any length thank you and uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video